Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you to be upstanding for the opening prayer? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Almighty God, we humbly ask you to guide our deliberations for the welfare and the benefit of the Moorish Shire and the people whom we serve. Acknowledgement to country. We, the Moorish Shire Council, would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and pay respect to their elders, both past and present. Councillors, you may be seated. Thank you. Apologies and request a leave of absence. Nobody, thank you. Declaration under the Act, Regulations of Code of Local Laws. Thank you. Declaration of any interest or conflict of interest. Councillor Mansfield, thank you. You want to declare which one it is? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I uh, declare a conflict of interest, item 10.2.2. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Confirmation of minutes from previous meeting. Can I have a councillor move those minutes, please? Councillor Cox, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to move that the minutes of the Committee of Council meeting held on Monday, the 7th of June, 2021, and scheduled council meeting held on Wednesday, 26th of May, 2021, as prepared, be confirmed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a councillor second that motion, please. Councillor um, Lawless, all those in favour? Carried, thank you. Okay, councillors, we're going to council reports. First of all, um, councillors, we'll start off our reports this afternoon. Firstly, I would like to welcome to the June meeting our incoming CEO, Claire Keenan. Thank you, Claire. It is wonderful to have you here, and I am excited about this new chapter of the Morishai Council with you at the helm. This is our current CEO, Mark Anderson's finally meeting, final meeting with council. Mark started working with us in the first half of 2014. And on behalf of my fellow councillors and staff, I would like to thank Mark for his absolute dedication to the council and the Mora community as a whole. He came to us due in a time of instability and steadied the ship, creating a respectful workplace where councillors and staff could work as a team. Mark has managed the organisation so we are able to embark on a huge shy wide capital works program, spending, spend, spending on libraries, sports pavilions, road constructions, drainages and bridges. Mark leaves us with a very strong balance sheet. Some large scale projects in the pipeline, well supported by government grants and a, and a capable team to work with a incoming CEO. Morishai has, has benefited from Mark's years of local government experience, and we will all be sorry to see him go. Good luck in your retirement, Mark, and thank you for all your wisdom and advice you have given me and all the councillors during your time here. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> councillors. Got verbal reports, would like to, um, Councillor Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on the 26th of May, um, Councillor Mansfield and myself, along with our CEO, uh, Mark Henderson, attended the Regional Council Victoria Summit at Ngambi. Um, it was to be a two day event, but of course, with the um, suddenly announced statewide lockdown um, due to COVID, it became a very truncated one day conference. Um, Mary, I have to congratulate Councillor Mary Ann Brown for, um, who's the RACV chair, on her ability to pivot and to squeeze as much into one day as she could out of the two days. Um, and thank you to Mark. It was a pleasure to meet um, uh, MP Mary Ann Thomas, our Minister for Regional Development, who actually opened the conference. Um, there were some great presentations um, from uh, the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning regarding the circular economy, and another from Homes Victoria regarding housing in regional Victoria. Um, and of course, Bernard Salt, the social demographer, his, his presentation was um, absolutely outstanding. And who knew that Moira Shire was one of the most religious shires um, with 64% um, religious out of the last census. So that was interesting. Um, but the most impressive presentation for me was from uh, Liz Ritchie, who's from the Regional Australia Institute, um, who spoke about the Move to More, sorry, the Move to More campaign, which is a campaign extensive advertising campaign that was actually due to start in May, although I haven't seen it yet, but it was around um, rebranding regional Victoria. 
and uh, trying to get um, you know more uh, city dwellers to relocate to our regional areas. So I actually started that in 2019. So it was quite timely, given that 30,000 Victorians have um, already left Melbourne, and 12,000 of those have relocated to regional Victoria. So I think that represents somewhat of an opportunity for our shire and our communities that we can look forward to, um, you know, expanding populations. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. Any other council reports? Councillor Mansfield. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've just um, returned from uh, the Australian Local Government Association conference in Canberra for the last three days. And um, it was 600 delegates uh, from all across the Australian uh, states and territories. Uh, the main theme of the conference was COVID, of course, and uh, COVID recovery, and also climate change and climate change adaption. Uh, it was very, uh, very interesting and uh, very fulfilling. And uh, I'd recommend to um, all councils, ORs, and uh, to uh, consider going to future age LGA conferences. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Any other councils wish to provide a report? Councillor Lawless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, like yourself, I, you've perhaps stole my thunder. Um, but I would also like to welcome Claire to, to Moira and uh, wish her all the best and her family into the future here. But especially to, to thank Mark for his contribution. Um, Mark's one of those uh, people which I really appreciate that when you raise an issue, he is prepared to ask uh, the really hard questions. And, but if you put up a strong argument, um, he, has al he always comes uh, behind us and as a councillor and as individuals on issues and gives you full support. And uh, uh, I particularly have appreciated that. And, uh, and uh, he certainly has left uh, Moira in a lot better shape than, um, than what we previously were. And I think that in any business and anything we do in life, we always like to leave the situation better. So I wish him all the best in the future. And, um, and I hope that uh, some of the major projects that, that uh, we have got on the, on the, on the books to be done um, will be completed and, and they'll be they'll be completed um, certainly with the with the contribution that Mark has put in over uh, over numerous years and uh, his negotiating skills on some of those things uh, um, uh, paramount to bring them to fruition. Thank you. Thank you Councillor. Let's see another council reports. No other council reports. Thank you. We'll move on to public question time. Submitted questions will be read and answered by a general manager of corporate, Simon Rennie. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's a number of questions tonight. The first one being from Jeff Campbell on the sports stadium and library low interest loan. What is the interest rate on the loan and is it fixed and when does the loan start? And the answer to that is the interest rate uh, will be fixed uh, for the term of the loan and the loan and very low interest rate and subsidy for that loan will be locked in and decided when the funds are drawn down. <clears throat> the next uh, two questions are from Jeanette Wilson, uh, being given the VCAT practice day hearing requested by Morris Shire Council is listed for the 18th of June. If it believes that the planning permit is legitimate, why didn't Moira Shire Council immediately advise VCAT and the YCAG group that it had awarded uh, the second planning permit on the 16th of June, putting itself, the state Victoria and the community to considerable and unnecessary costs? The second part of that question is having awarded uh, itself a second permit, why didn't Moira Shire withdraw the first permit granted in, 2000, in December 2020 when asked by the VCAT senior member, Mr. G code. So in response to both questions, the council respects YCAG's right to object to a planning decision and it did not want to deny YCAG an opportunity to put its case to VCAT. On the other hand, council wanted to create planning certainty so that the project could proceed without further delays. It was also open to YCAG to withdraw its objection and that opportunity still exists as there is no real purpose in continuing to object 
to a planning decision that would not be acted upon. Uh, Mary Cooper has the next question. Were all Morayshire councillors advised that the council was processing a new permit for demolition of the community hall and building works? And yes, councillors have been well briefed on the project status and planning process. Thanks, Mary. The second question about uh, is how much did Morayshire Council pay legal counsel for the practice day hearing? And uh, we can respond. We haven't received that invoice yet. It's in a schedule of rates contract. The next two questions are from Helen White. And Helen asks, why did Morayshire Council issue the planning permit for the demolition of the Yarrawonga Community Hall and construction of the library to a Mr. Duncan Lewis of Chris Smith and Associates rather than to Morayshire Council? And the answer to that is because Chris Smith and Associates was the applicant acting for Morayshire, um, this ensured planning aspects of applicant and determining authority were at arm's length. The second part of Helen's question is, as the permit is issued to Mr. Duncan Lewis of Chris Smith and Associates, rather than to Morayshire Council, is your second planning permit still subject to appeal? Um, and Helen, the answer to that is, the permit applies to the land and not the applicant. The land is owned by council under Crown Grant for library purposes, and the library project is a council project. It is council's understanding that the permit for the library is not appealable. And the last question uh, we have uh, from Moira Deeming. And under Victorian law, is it legal for local government councils to provide sex-based targeted services facilities separate to gender-based target services and facilities? And then goes on to list a question about signage in public toilets. But uh, we just need to know that the council does not provide legal advice on Victorian law. Um, this matter should be better raised uh, and addressed to the Commission for Gender Equality. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. That's all the questions for today. Thank you, Simon, for the questions and answers. Uh, we'll go into uh, 10 officers report for determination, 10.1 officer of the CEO, 10.1.1 child safety policy. Can I have a councillor move that motion, please, Councillor Brooks? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the recommendation, sorry, it's lost my way. Thank you. Uh, the recommendation is that council approves the reviewed child safe policy. Okay, council, can I have a council second that motion, please? Councillor Cox, Councillor Brooks, you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Moira Shire in 2017 adopted the initial child safe policy. Uh, this is uh, its first review, although it remains largely unchanged. Um, it is a compulsory requirement by the Victorian Government that councils are compliant with the implement implementation of these standards. And the focus of the standards is to help organisations drive cultural change uh, so that protecting children from abuse is embedded in everyday thinking and practice. The child safe policy is consistent with our strategy, uh, also that is set out in the council plan. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Councillor Brooks, Councillor Cox. Any other councillors wish to speak to that motion, please? Councillor Lawless. Uh, just a, uh, a quick comment, Mr. Mayor. It's a real pity that we even actually have to have a policy in this area, but it, in the world we're in today, it's as like many others that are here as parents, um, we know that we, we have to have the ultimate protection of, of our children and, and in today's world. And this, uh, this uh, policy outlines the requirements of for council staff and volunteers to prevent child abuse and to in increase responsive to allegations of child abuse. And I think that that's probably in the past where uh, we have fallen down when we thought so, something may be not, not particularly right. We, we, this is now, we're in a world now where we have to speak up and we have to do things. And so I fully endorse this policy. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Councillor Brooks, you wish to sum up? Oh, sorry, Councillor Burke. Hold on, sorry, Councillor Brooks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I agree with Councillor Lawless that it is somewhat unfortunate that we've got to go to this um, extreme. Uh, but this day and age, it is a very much a necessity. Um, I've often been being in the school bus industry for a long time. 
we've seen it all grow, but I've sort of been quite skeptical in the past of the uh, working with children cards that we've all got to obtain and we've got to obtain them for both sides of the river. Um, in my view, all that prevents is a second occurrence happening. It does nothing to prevent the first occurrence. Now, this is where these policies are so important that they fill that gap to a certain extent that if everybody's um, appreciative of what the requirements are and has got it front and centre at all times, well, that makes the whole system work a lot better, Mr Mayor. And look, it's, um, I, I do um, endorse this very much so. Um, it's unfortunate that we've got to have it, but we, we do have to have it. And look, I think this covers most bases. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I endorse this policy too. It's essential and, um, and within this too, it sort of lays out how we recruit our staff and visitors. So it's not only the council staff as well, but it's councillors, it's the whole organisation. And it probably underlines the fact that absolutely everybody in our society should have eyes, eyes wide open because um, it's up to all of us really to call it out, um, to call out if we see... Um, make sure that we provide that safe environments are, um, in this case, provided in our work, work setting with the children and their families, but also to call it out. That's the other important thing, is to call it out if we see that, um, that behaviour and make sure that it doesn't um, continue. So it's very, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any other councillors to speak to that motion? Councillor Brooks, you wish to sum up? Uh, nothing further. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. All those in favour of the motion? Carried. Thank you. Okay, 10.1.2, Lake Mawala Bridge Green Route Support. Could I please have a council move that motion? Council Lawless. Uh, the recommendation is that council note the consultation by Transport New South Wales on bridge alignment options for the Yarrawonga Mulwala and Lodge of Submission, reiterating council's continued support for the Green Route alignment based on road safety freight efficiency and removal of trucks from Belmore Street and the foreshore on both sides of the lake. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Can I have a Councillor second that motion? Councillor Elliott, thank you. Councillor Lawless, wish to speak to it? Uh, not, I haven't got a lot to say, Mr Mayor. This really is just to reinforce the position that we, or, that we already have um, in supporting um, in supporting the, the alignment of the bridge for the reasons that I've read out in the recommendation. Um, and certainly um, this, this is going to be one of the big challenges um, for our incoming CEO, Claire, to uh, get on top of. And, and we're certainly looking forward to um, a continued input that we've had from Mark in the past, but through, through uh, Claire, it'll be, this is one of the major issues that uh, along with the Yamurka flood study that we've got in the Shire, it, it's, it's something that needs to be done, but it needs to be done properly. Thank you, Councillor Laws. Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to say that the green route makes sense on every level. Uh, since an overwhelming support from both communities uh, on each side of the river for the green route, Moira, along with our neighbouring shires across the River Federation, both federal MPs, Damien Drum and Susan Lay, Vicky Transport Minister Jacinta Allen, uh, have all indicated their support for the Green Route. It's only New South Wales to date have shown preference for the Grey Route. Uh, however, that all changed last week when the New South Roads Minister, Paul Toole, paid a visit to the border to announce a six week consultation process to better understand wider community concerns and values for the new river crossing. Uh, Possum Pirtle, chair of the Mole Progress Association has put in a power of work to get the minister to the border to give him some insight into the two route option. So for that reason alone, I think it's important that Moira endorse uh, continued support for the Green. For all the reasons in the recommendations, plus providing the most direct route across the lake along the railway line alignment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Mansfield. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, fully endorse the uh, comments of the previous two speakers. Um, this, is, this has been led by, this has been an ongoing uh, 
problem and challenge for communities on both sides of the river to get the alignment to to the beside the existing railway line, the green route. Uh, it's it's been a community led uh, campaign led by John Lawless and uh, uh, Robert Purtle. And uh, I think that the uh, we got the opportunity now for all people on both sides of the river and uh, stakeholders to make a submission to the Department of Transport New South Wales to uh, get put our voices together to get our uh, get the green route as uh, the preferred option. Um, I believe that uh, this will happen and uh, I only hope that uh, the Moira Shire and Federation Shire put a very strong submission backing their communities to achieve the same, that is the green route. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield, Councillor Martin. Uh, I support what everybody has said before me and I still think that our plebiscite is gold. It's good for Slate, Slate Redbridge going um, forward because we had a um, we have we had a petition before and that wasn't sort of considered legitimate that we've got the plebiscite with all the names on it. So I think that's that's great leverage for us and we just keep pushing that ahead. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Maybe Councillor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just uh, uh, support this motion, Mr. Mayor, but uh, probably Council Martin's words there in, in the plebiscite that, that there's going to be basically another survey and to, for the community of Yarrawonga Mawala, Mr. Mayor, that they, they come out in droves and vote for how they want to go and to, to support the green route because that is the cheapest option that we've got on the table. And um, as Council Mansfield will know that this has been on the go since about early 2000s. And here we still are, uh, um, Murray Darling and Basin Authority. Um, we're going to, um, sorry, Mr. Mayor, we're going to uh, have the time frame of 2020. That's past us now, but now it's the time for our community to get together and support the Green Route. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well said, Councillor Cox. Any other councillors we speak to that motion? Councillor Orla, should we should sum up? All said, all those in favour of the motion? Carried, thank you. 10.2 corporate, 10.21 annual mayoral and councillor allowance. Could I have a councillor move that motion, please? Councillor Lawless. Uh, the council retained the annual allowance for the mayor and councillors at the maximum limit set for a category two council, being A, the mayoral allowance of 81,204 and council allowance at 26,245. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Could I have a council second that motion, please? Councillor Cox, Councillor Lawless, wish to speak to it? I think it is important that I do say something, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, and sometimes this, this just gets passed over and, and we don't comment because we're not going to. But, um, but the reality is that, that we have several councillors in, in um, amongst all of us that uh, run complex businesses and um, and have to employ staff uh, to actually serve on council. So it's not like they're actually uh, getting anything out of, um, they're, they're finishing up in a better position. They may, they've they made a commitment um, to, uh, the, to the community. And I don't think it's fair that those that, and I, I don't want to mention any councillors' names, but I know that one person that particularly just has to employ somebody so he can attend uh, uh, agenda meetings and council meetings, and, uh, and he's not alone. So, um, and other councillors have to uh, make other arrangements where they've got jobs that they have to, to leave to attend. And, and we want to encourage people that, uh, that, that are part of complex businesses and, and have got skills um, to uh, come on to council, and I think they, they deserve to be rewarded. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Councillor Cox. Yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just briefly, I thoroughly agree with um, what Councillor Lawless has said there. Um, yeah, we need to try and encourage people to, to uh, nominate and stand for council, and um, you won't get them if they're going to pay them nothing. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. And um, uh, at the end of the day, somebody's got to pay and, and uh, to do the job. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cox. Councillor Martin. Thank you. 
Uh, I think it's important that there is some remuneration because in years gone by, it was pretty much the province of wealthy or retired people who stood for council where this, it frees it up and it makes it a little bit more easier for perhaps people who've got children or work different shifts or whatever. We, we need that flexibility and sometimes that takes money to allow that to um, happen. So I think, and I agree with Councillor Cox, if there was nothing, I, I think you'd be struggling to get councillors. They don't do it for the money, but you need the money to sometimes offset some of your expenses yeah. and get variety. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any other councillors to speak to that motion? Councillor Lawler, should we just sum up? I just want to rec correct one word I used. I said uh, rewarded. It should have really been compensated because um, you're not really going to finish up in front. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. All those in favour. All those in favour of the motion. Thank you. I thought you were going to want to say something further, Councillor Cox. Thank you. Carry. Okay. okay. Ten point two point two. There is a conflict of interest with Councillor Mansfield. Thank you. which is the lease agreement with the Bureau of Meteorology. Can I have a councillor move that motion? Councillor Burke, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I move that Council A enter into a lease agreement with the Bureau of Meteorology for a portion of land at the Yarrawonga Aerodrome and B authorise the Chief Executive Officer to negotiate, sign and seal the lease document. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Councillor Burke, could I have a council second that motion to Councillor Elliott? Councillor Burke, you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, when we've got rain due or whatever, the first thing we do is hop on our web page, Yarrawonga radar, to see what's coming, when it's coming, and all the rest. A, a very vital piece of information. It's at our fingertips, and I'd hate to see it disappear. So whatever we need to do, Mr. Mayor, to keep this there, I think we need to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burke. But the weather's always a little bit different on the uh, West End, isn't it, Councillor Burke? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Elliott. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Look, I just want to reiterate what uh, Councillor Lawless uh, or his comments at the last uh, previous meeting, reiterating, reiterating, sorry, we are extremely lucky to have, um, you know, this service here in Yarrawonga. Uh, it's only a small extension of the current footprint and the benefits are great for the Shire as well as the whole region. Um, there were three submissions received in support of the bomb lease agreement. Uh, we secure the tenure for another 20 years, so I believe we should support this motion. Councillor, any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Lawless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Only to support um, what previous councillors have said, that we, we are extremely lucky to have this, uh, this situated in our shire. I know working in another area uh, over the last 20 odd years, that the areas in the Mallee and the Wimmera that have been screaming out for this type of service. So we're extremely lucky to have this. And um, I wasn't, and I looked into this in a bit of detail, and it appears that. They're actually, when they've on this new area of land, which is similar to what we've got, which is like 250 square metres or something like that, they're actually then going to decommission the, the existing infrastructure. So obviously this may be an improvement to the technology and that they've got in the new facility. And uh, that will be fantastic for the area. And I just hope that on some of those dry years it attracts a bit more rain. <laughs> <laughs> right, that'll happen, I'm sure, Councillor Lawless. Any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Burke, wish to sum up? I think all that's been said that needs to be said. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burke. All those in favour of the motion? Okay, we thank you. Can you please um, request Mr. Mansfield to come back in? Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. 10.2.3, more Shire Council use of the common seal and conduct of council meeting local law number one slash 2021. Could I have a councillor move that motion, please? Councillor Lawless. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the recommendation that Council adopt more uh, shy Council use of common seal and conduct at Council meetings law, local law number one, 2021, and to revoke the more shy Council meeting procedures law, 2017. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Could I have a Councillor second that motion, please? Councillor Cox, Councillor Lawless, you wish to speak to it? Uh, only just to say that um, the 2020 Local Act requires uh, the common seal to be used in accordance with any applicable uh, local law. And a local law is also required to create offences and to apply penalties for misuse of the seal and any uh, disorderly conduct at council meetings, which we don't have any way, anyway, so we shouldn't need that. But uh, no, but it is an important thing to, to make sure that, uh, uh, that we do everything in the proper way. Thank you, councillors. Councillor Cox. Any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Lawless, you wish to sum up? All those in favour of the motion? Okay, thank you. 10.2.4, Moro Shire Council Budget 2021 slash 22. Could I have a councillor move that motion, please, Councillor Cox? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that Councillor adopts the Moro Shire Budget 2021-22. Thank you. Could I have a councillor second that motion, please? Councillor Elliott. Thank you. Councillor Cox, you wish to speak to it? Yeah, uh, just briefly, Mr. Mayor. Um, we have a capital works program, approximately $14.5 million worth. We have projects right across our shire and major projects basically in um, uh, Yarrawonga, the library and the sports stadium. We have the Amerka flood study. We have upgrades of, to community halls or, or sporting facilities as in air conditioning and things like that right across the shire and even into our smaller communities, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, and our rates have kept at a reasonable uh, level, they're capped as we all know. But um, as we go into this budget, Mr. Mayor, we're probably in the best financial position we've ever been in as a council. And I just think that's a testament of our, our CEO and the hierarchy in our finance department, which I want to thank Simon for, Mr. Mayor, um, and Andrew in, in their respected areas. But um, yeah, it just shows that. Um, across our shot and we've had plenty of time to sit down and go through this. We've had months, Mr. T Mr. Mayor, in deliberation. And I'll just leave it at that at the moment, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cox. Councillor Elliott, we should speak to it. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to endorse uh, Councillor Cox's comments um, to, and to add that the process has been extraordinary in that most projects or submissions have been more than deserving of funding. However, and the final draft of our plan has been rigorous and a competitive process. And unfortunately, projects have missed out. Uh, they've either been deferred to our long-term list on the financial plan or will be unachievable without, without uh, extra grant funding. Looking back though, I reckon community groups, sporting groups and the like probably need to get their hands on a copy of the council plan with the intent of aligning submissions for 2022 uh, using strategies from the council plan. Um, I believe the submissions that tied in with the plan were looked on more favourably. Thanks. Thank you, Any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to speak against the motion in as much as I feel that this is the most important document we as the elected council deal with. Um, and look, Mr. Mayor, I, I honestly feel that I can't vote in favour of this. Well, I believe that we haven't had the deliberation um, that I'd be comfortable with in going through. Um, yes, we have um, asked for submissions and we've received some submissions, which um, of 12, there's 11 of these submissions. I elected to speak to them more recently. Mr. Mayor, my concern is, and um, I, I feel that where there is a, a gross inequity here, we haven't got one project on the um, 
the asset and expansion upgrade and renewal of existing assets. We haven't got one project west of Numerica. So we've got more than the former Shire of Nathalia plus quite a bit. You've got 30% of Moira Shire's land space with not a project to be had. And look, I'm not at all comfortable with it, Mr. Mayor, and I would like to um, postpone, which I believe we can do, and go back and go through the detail, Mr. Mayor, because I think there's a gross inequity there. And we've, as I say, we've got a, a third of the land mass of Moira Shire with not a boot deep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Lawless, thank you. Uh, I'd like to take on board uh, the comments that uh, Councillor Burke has said, and I think that we do need to be well aware of the process that we that we get to. But I'm certainly I'm not in favour of uh, postponing the budget. Um, we've had, sorry, we've had four uh, consultation meetings with the community, and with uh, I think we're pretty happy with the submissions that we that we got this year, and and certainly we we weren't able to support them all, but. I might just go through a few of them. We'll continued support for the library project in Yarrawonga and the Maldi Sports Stadium, uh, the Newmerka Shire Hall installation of the solar energy system and the Cobham's uh, Sports Stadium, and particularly the, the ones that uh, we've st still got our 100% uh, support behind the Newmerka flood mitigation scheme, and. Um, and one of the ones that did come up in those consultation, and I think among councillors we talked about it was, and I think this will involve all of the towns, and hopefully it will uh, it will include the west of the of the Shire as well, Councillor Burke. Uh, it was increasing the funding for for footpaths, and I think that's one of the things that many of us have wanted to see uh, more connectivity in our towns with our with our with our hospital centres and our shopping centres and that sort of thing, and. And I'm not saying that in the past there wasn't well organised, but I think the people that are on top of that now are doing a terrific job. But it's also good to see um, some money going into the Wilby Equestrian area and 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 scoping of the the bar, uh, Yarrawonga Barramine Cycle Track, which which I think we have got funding federally for about six twenty or something there, and we're we're only a major uh, we're only a minor player in putting in in there. But one of the ones that I'm really happy that we're, we're doing, and I know that um, I'd like to see some, some work done at the Katunga Reserve in the future, and, and we certainly have got them in mind, but um, I'm really happy that, uh, that we have got the uh, Katamatite uh, netball courts in there for renewal. Um, it's a project that I've been pushing for, for a few years, and, uh, and the committee out there have done a fantastic job, and I think they've made three submissions to us over time to make sure we didn't forget forget them, and I'm telling them if anybody's listening tonight, we never we didn't forget you. The it's interesting uh, projects like that. It's not a it's not a well known fact, but those that, that probably uh, play netball and I don't, but there's many that do. There's over a thousand girls in Moira that play netball um, every week, and that's that's only in the organised competitions that are. Uh, within the leagues, and we have uh, three different leagues uh, that are, that are uh, th through Moira, but also over the river, and um, and that's that's only just the participants. But then we have the, the uh, other uh, intertown competitions and town competitions, and the involvement of parents and families, and that's what keeps a lot of our small communities together. That that involvement, that's where they come and talk about issues that are uh, not related to the sport. There are hubs of our committees, and 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 so I'm really I'm wrapped that uh, that we are recognising uh, those communities and what that we need to do uh, for them. So that's about oh, I might leave it at that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Laws. Councillor Limbrick. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to speak in favour of the motion, and I I think um, we have had considerable discussion about the budget over over months and community consultation. We started back in April. Um, we have got a rate cap of 1.5%, which does make it difficult. Um, we've, in the budget, maintained all our fees and charges without any increase on the previous year, including venue hire fees, et cetera, which is important, I think, in the community when we're trying to recover from um, the impact of COVID and get people out and about. 
Um, obviously, there are many, many people who want things, and, and that's the challenge for all of us, I think, is there's lots of wants, but, and, but, but we have to do a, our budget based on the needs and what's the most important, and I think we've done a, a, a good job in doing that and prioritising the projects in front of us. Um, and, uh, and I think that's the challenge is to continue to be able to do that within our budget. Um, the community consultation process I found to be really interesting and I really applaud those who took the effort to, to put their cases and the quality of those presentations that we, we had in relation to, um, again, some of, the, some of the wants as distinct from needs, but, but I think it's important that people have the chance to put their case and I think that I congratulate those who, who took the, made the effort and, uh, and put their case. Not all were funded, but, but we heard them all and some of those will make the list for future budgets. So um, I, have, I endorse the, the budget. Thank you, Councillor Embry. Councillor Martin. Um, I'd like to congratulate the Shire actually, because it's, we still are going through a time of transition and I don't think it's been said enough of just how um, the Shire as a whole um, has been run through this time. It hasn't been easy. There's been people working at home and we've sort of got on with things and tried to manage it and make things as easy for everybody, the ratepayers and the people who actually carry out the work. I would actually, um, there's many things in here I support. I would like to have a month's delay though, just to fine tune things a bit more. Um, as Council Imbrick said, we've got a very modest um, a rate increase of 1.5 and the only other um, fee that goes up is the waste charges, which we really don't have any uh, alternative there because the, the landfill things have gone up around the state. So we've, we've just got to accommodate that. But I think, you know, that's been pretty conservative. We've got a huge shire. We've got um, 4,000 kilometres network of sealed and uh, unsealed roads and many bridges and things like that. Um, going through the shire, um, I'm thrilled that we've still, you know, we're forging ahead with our... Um, flood mitigation in Yamurka and an upgrade of pumps and, and the upgrade of the drainage in um, Patterson and, and uh, pa Patterson Street, that's really good. Uh, for our town hall, that's getting a real revamp with the ancient old air conditioning. So, you know, right through the Shire, there's lots of really good projects um, that are being done, but um, um, so I commend that. Um, Yarrawonga, you've got lots of money being spent up there, um, but I, I would still, myself would like another another month just to fine tune some of the things, particularly particularly the submissions that were made um, by the public, because that also highlighted to me some areas that we I think we have a weakness in the overall planning that some people would actually come with the way they, they were presented. So I sort of think there's areas there that needed to be looked at. So um, yeah, there's some good things there, but I'd just like a little bit more time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any other councillors we should speak to? Councillor Orders. Uh, Mansfield, sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to uh, speak against the, the motion. Uh, as a Yarrawonga councillor, or a councillor from Yarrawonga on the Shire, uh, there is no complaint from me about any of the uh, capital works program that's been happening over at the eastern end of the Shire. We are getting our fair share at long last. Um, but however, I'm very concerned that we had some late submissions from the public and organisations uh, about the, the budget. And we haven't, I have a, I've had a read, Councillor Lindbrick, and there is no mention of uh, what we provided for those uh, late uh, submissions. We seem to be um, providing monies to organisations that should be looking after themselves and uh, propping up others. And uh, I, uh, I would like to see the, the fine print and, and that's why, and it's not in there, not in the 68 page submission from the council. However, I would like to congratulate the, um, the organisation for uh, putting the budget together. But however, there was, there's some uh, fine print that needs to be looked at. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Any other councillors to speak to that motion? Councillor Cox, you wish to sum up? Yeah, just briefly, Mr Mayor. Um, the Shire, we've been very lucky, Mr Mayor, in, with, or, or unlucky, the whole community with COVID, and the federal government's come out with significant grants across the Shire. Um, now, this is going to allow this council, if not in this budget or in a very short budget in frame, like in a couple of years' time, Mr Mayor, 
to have projects that are clearly identified within our, our system now to be achieved. And Mr Mayor, they would never have been achieved for years to come. I can, I'll say that, Mr Mayor, because they, not that the community didn't need them, it's just because we didn't have the financial capacity to turn around and deliver some of these projects. And to be honest with you, Mr Mayor, some of them weren't in that priority one um, category, in my thinking. But, Mr Mayor, with this money from the federal government that's come in, and as I've said before, it's money from heaven, it's just going to make it so much easier for us as a community for across the whole of our shire, Mr Mayor, uh, to breathe a bit easier uh, into the future because we don't know exactly where we're going to be in, in a few years' time, budget-wise, let alone 10 years' time, Mr Mayor. So take it while we can. Thank, thank you, Mr thank Mayor. Thank you, you Councillor Cox. Thank you. All those in favour of the motion... All those in, against the motion? It's carried, thank you. Okay, those against? Councillor Burke, Councillor Mansfield, Councillor Martin. Those in favour? Councillor Lawless, Councillor Cox, Councillor Brooks, Councillor Mustard, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Limbrick, thank you. 10.2.5, Moorish I Council Plan 2021-2025. Can I have a councillor move that motion, please? Councillor Elliott. Uh, I recommend that Council adopts the Moira Shire Council Plan 21 to 2025. Thank you, Councillor. Could I have a Councillor second that motion, please? Councillor Lawless, Councillor Elliott, wish to speak to it. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I believe this document is a must-have reference as a first-time Councillor. Uh, I feel privileged to be... I, sorry, I felt privileged in being part of the process in coming up with this plan along with my fellow councillors and council staff. Uh, you probably could say it's the Bible uh, and is often referred to as such for direction on most, if not all, council initiatives. Um, as we all know, a lot of time and effort has gone into this document, and I'd probably like to quote you, uh, Mr Mayor, when you said that the council plan is integral in defining and navigating the direction of council for the current term. This document underpins all we strive to achieve as a council with our vision statement defined by five key pillars. So there's just one step to go and that's to adopt the plan. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Councillor Lawless. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I might just go on and mention those uh, five pillars that the main part of the plan that uh, Councillor Elliott has mentioned. They are to set a uh, direction for council uh, two, to, to, to uh, strategic objectives to, to achieve those directions and set a strategy for the four years and to monitor those strategies. It's not much good having a strategy to do something if we don't monitor them. And, and the description of initiatives and priorities for services and infrastructure and amenity that, uh, that the community have an input into. And I think that as Councillor Elliott has uh, has said that it's a, a really important document and it's got something that when, when our staff are doing things that they have to refer, refer back to this document and say, well, does it, does it uh, fulfil the strategic plan that we've got over four years or does it, is it in the direction the council is setting? So it's a very important document. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Any other, Councillor Martin? Again, I re reiterate what has been said. It's the most important um, document because it gives us our direction. Uh, I've had pointed out to me just very, very recently that I feel we really need to make a change to pillar number one. I don't know if we can do it tonight or we do it later, um, but it's, um, and I sort of feel slightly ashamed actually, but um, just with our inclusiveness, with people that have disabilities and things like that, I think it really hasn't been mentioned much at all. And I think it needs to be because if we're going to be an inclusive shire, we need to make sure that people, whether they're, and they don't necessarily need to be elderly. There can be many little kids that have different sorts of disability and I think we could do better there. So do I make a note of that or I would sort of like more made of that in our council plan. As I said, that's just been brought to my um, attention. So I would- well, I think it's so a little document. Do? So Councillor Martin, I'm so sure we can make we those changes in the future okay, if we then. need to. Councillor Brooks, you wish to speak yep. to that motion, please? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I am actually very proud of um, the council plan and um, I, um, it's the first plan, obviously, I'm a new councillor, so it's the first plan that I've been involved in, but um, I disagree with you, Councillor Martin, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that inclusion and diversity is included in the council plan and, you know, both of those terms are in the pillars. So I do think that there has been, um, you know, considerable focus on um, inclusion. And I think that, um, you know, I, I look forward to working, I look forward to implementing it over the next three and a half years. But um, I don't think, you know, disability doesn't need to be singled out necessarily as a specific group, you know, inclusiveness just means, you know, we include everyone in our community, not necessarily singling them out. Thank you, Councillor Brooks. I'll go. You've already spoken, Councillor Martin. You won't be able to go back onto that one. Sorry. Uh, any other councillors wish to speak to that motion, please? Councillor Elliott, you wish to sum up? Oh, I think it's all been said, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. All those in favour of the motion? Carried. Thank you. 10.2.6, Morishai Council Financial Plan 2021-2031. Can I have a councillor move that motion, please? Councillor Cox. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the motion that council will adopt the Morishai Council Financial Plan 2021 to 2031. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Cox. Can I have a councillor second that motion, please? Councillor Lawless, Councillor Cox, you wish to speak to it? Yes, uh, briefly, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a new requirement under the Local Government Act, and but I see it as a critical importance along with our budget, Mr. Mayor, but a critical importance that we have a long-term financial plan as well as a council. Um, it's been uh, said here tonight, Mr. Mayor, that we've got um, uh, how funds are distributed across the Shire, but um, if we haven't got the financial plan and our council plan lined up, Mr. Mayor, um, we need to identify it. And um, I just think this is very critical. Sorry, I'll go. Councillor Lawless, you wish to speak to it further on? Yeah, I'll just go on. Uh, hopefully with the same train of thought that uh, Councillor Cox had. But um, these are really, it's a really important document this year. And it, we, we must have in the plan realistic uh, expectations of what we uh, may receive in grants, um, not only uh, having real expectations of what we're going to receive internally with ourselves, with our rates. But one of the parts of the plan is to make sure that we don't overestimate ourselves as to what we realistically would get uh, from outside sources, which is uh, which can be federal and state. And one of the things that I really, from an outsider before, I think there's a perception um, prior to, to rate capping that uh, the perception was that many councils just uh, set a budget and said, oh, well, if we're a little bit short, we'll just whack the rates up next year. And I think that rate capping has really, has really brought a real change um, in the thinking pattern of, of local government and, made, and, and brought us a, a tighter, uh, certainly made management tighter, but, but it, it is, it's, it's brought about a change in thinking and, and more creative. And I, I think that... Um, We've still got so many things that we can achieve, and and it certainly forces us as well to um, to go out to these uh, other funding streams, which are very important. I think we're talking about nearly half of our funding coming from from outside rates, or about half of half of our budget, or maybe a little bit less. So they're really important. But we we as I said before, we just we just can't be unrealistic in what we might expect from the federal and state government. So. Uh, we need, as we've just debated through our budget, we need to be really mindful of uh, what uh, we can deliver for the community. And I think, as many have mentioned, uh, we certainly would like to, I would like a nice gravel road down the middle of my property, but I don't think I'm going to get one. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Councillor Mansfield. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to congratulate uh, our financial uh, department, headed by Simon, uh, on producing this document. Um, it's good that they can see 10 years down the track. It's uh, excellent. They've got a, must have a great crystal ball in the office there somewhere. Um, who would have thought two years ago in 19, uh, 2019 that uh, 2020 would have been what it was and 2021 what it was with all the money being 
thrown about by state and federal governments. Uh, anyway, it's it's a, a document which we can work on and uh, look at uh, down the track and see how we're travelling. And uh, I congratulate the uh, Simon for putting it all together and um, fully support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Councillor Limbrick. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to congratulate Simon too. And I, I agree with Councillor Mansfield. Um, the crystal ball is a brilliant thing. From an accounting perspective, it's hard to budget two years in, in, in advance, let alone 10. But I think it is, it is important that we do have um, a baseline that we can work off um, without extraordinary income coming in from grants, et cetera, that we can have a base understanding of what we can afford on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, we're certainly in a, in, a, in a changing world where the needs of our, our community are changing, the demographics changing, we're seeing exponential growth. So it is really, really difficult to see what's going to happen in three years' time if you look at what's going on through the Shire now. Um, we're coping with a disaster that we've never, something that we've never seen before, but we will have others for sure. So obviously all of that stuff can impact on the 10-year uh, plan. So like everything, a regular review of the plan is key, but it is a document that we've got something to work with. And I think we just need to um, have a, at least a, a yearly review and probably it's a six monthly review of that plan and just see how we're tracking in, in regard to other things that might happen around us. So um, I'm certainly in favour of the plan and, and congratulate uh, the staff on putting it together. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Burke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I think any of us, uh, we go to a fair bit of trouble. And as Councillor Manfield said, we'd love to have a crystal ball sitting in the corner, but we put together business plans um, and look, not necessarily 10 years out. I think you know, it's a, a pretty demanding request that you look at 10 years out, but it is a live document that we viewed at um, regular uh, intervals. And as Councillor Olympic said, it gives us a good yardstick as to we can measure up with all the, the uh, differences that can occur. It gives us a good yardstick. We can measure up and see just how we're going at any given time. As it's been reported before, like um, not so long ago, we came through the millennium drought. Um, we were licking the wounds and getting over that, and then Kodu stepped in, Mr. Mayor, we don't know what's around the corner. Um, it's probably a darn good thing we don't. But look, these are challenges, but what it does, what this um, financial plan does is give us a yardstick that we can compare to, come back regularly and visit to just see how we're going with everything else that's going on around us. Thank you, Councilor Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Councillor Martin. Well, this is a new requirement um, from the Local Government Act of 220, that, uh, 2020, that we do a 10-year financial plan. I think it's um, necessary. I think that allows us to have vision and things will change. And I think the Chinese go out at least 50 years ahead. So, you know, when we, we go out to our communities and they talk about their aspirations and how they'd like their towns and their districts and that to develop, you've got to have that forward thinking vision rather than lurching from year to year. And as somebody said, you know, once upon a time, probably a lot of councils just kept upping their rates to go with what they thought people needed. But this gives us a chance and it may need to change, but to look forward to the future and to also take into account all those community plans that we go around that we do to, um, to realise those aspirations and see, well, you know, what do people really want? How do they want their shire to develop? How do they want their town to um, uh, develop? So, yes, I fully support this. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any other councillors wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Cox, you wish to sum up? Yes, uh, just briefly, Mr Mayor. Um, Probably the main point I want to make is with significant projects within the Shire, and it, it just takes time to line the dollars up, Mr Mayor, whether it's state, federal, or even our own money. Um, so I just think that you know, a financial plan down the track is, is critical to, for the survival of our Shire. Plus, Mr Mayor, it reassures our community that some of these projects, it lets them know exactly where they're at whether they're going to be achieved within two or three years' time or six years' time. We can't do the impossible, but it all takes money. But I just commend the motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cox. All those in favour of the motion? Carried. Thank you. 10.2.7, Moorish Eye Council Revenue and Rating Plan 2021.
slash 2025. Could I have a councillor move that motion, please? Councillor Limbrick. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd, I'd like to move the recommendation that council accept. Uh, so, sorry, I've lost my page. <laughs> I've lost the page, hang on. I reckon I've got a wrong page. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Mari's got my, Councillor Martin's got my page. The recommendation that Council adopts the Moira Council Revenue and Rating Plan 2021-2025. Thank you, Councillor Limbrick. Can I have a Councillor second that motion? Councillor Lawless. Councillor Limbrick, you wish to speak to it? Totally unprepared, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like, yeah, it, again, it's like the other plans that we've spoken about, the uh, revenue and rating plan. It clearly is how we raise the money to do all the things that we've prepared or that we've put into our, um, into our, in our business plan and our 10-year financial plan. So um, I don't think much needs to be said, but it's an important document, again, that we've, um, that we've got a document that shows just how we're going to come about the money that we need to uh, deliver all the services and, and, and growth and, and infrastructure um, projects that we've got on the plan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Limbrick. Councillor Lawless. Yes, um, this, uh, we have to develop a plan uh, by the 30th of June after uh, every election, and, and it is very similar to the last the last uh, motion, only that we're looking at the shorter time, time frame, which is this, this, um, this part of this, of this council up to, up to uh, 25. Um, and it must show how the council is is going to generate its income. But as I said before, with the, the longer plan, uh, we need to be uh, realistic, have a realistic outlook on what uh, we expect for federal and and, and state funds to, to help us uh, help us uh, provide the community the needs the community wants and needs. Uh, so it, it is the shorter shorter plan um, and more refined and. And uh, it's, it's really important that it's adopted and I, I fully support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Any other, any other Councillor wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Limbrick, you wish to sum up? Uh, nothing further to add, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Limbrick. All those in favour of the motion? Thank you. Carried. 10.2.8, Audit and Risk Committee meeting minutes, 13th of May 2021. Could I have a Councillor move that, please? Motion. Councillor Martin, thank you. Um, I would like to uh, move the recommendation that Council accept the minutes of the Audit and Risk Committee meeting held on the 13th of May 2021 and secondly endorse the recommendations contained within the report. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Could I have a Councillor second that motion, please, Councillor Limbrick? Councillor Martin, you wish to speak to it? Look, I think it's pretty self explanatory, so um, I'll reserve my right there. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Limbrick? Oh, just briefly, Mr. Mayor, I think um, sitting on that committee. Uh, it's encouraging when you hear the auditors' um, comments on, on the uh, various reports that go through um, and that for two meetings that I've, that I've been involved in that we, we get basically praised for the fact that um, the council is addressing all of the issues that are important, that we don't have any serious internal issues. Um, we hear reports on our... Um, on, on the technology, you know, how we're going, all that, all the security of our, our data, all, all those sorts of things come before the committee and you've got independent people that are, are knowledgeable accountants and, and such sitting and, and taking an in external view. And I think it's a really important process and, and as I say, to sit there and, and hear um, the internal and, and external auditors um, comments is, is really encouraging. And I think, as Councillor Martin said, all of the details are in the report. Um, and I think you'll, you'll note that the comments are very favourable and any of, the, any of the matters that are that are still outstanding are being addressed appropriately. Thank you, Councillor Brick. Any other council wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Burke. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, as uh, Councillor Limbrick and Councillor Martin have both said, I think as a councillor, it does give us some confidence um, that, and look, just reading through that, there's a, a lot of detail there. Um, we've got somebody with their, or a group of people with their finger on the pulse and looking for chinks in the armour. Um, look, I, I think that it does serve as well as um, uh, not, not council, not being exposed to risk 
And look, I, I think it's a great thing, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Hey, Councillor Burke, any other councillors wish to speak to that motion? Councillor Lawless. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to uh, reinforce what other councillors have said, uh, and certainly we are in a strong position. Our balance sheet is strong, and our, but uh, it's really good, and the people might not be aware that we actually have three councillors, Councillor Limerick, Councillor Martin, and yourself, Mr. Mayor, that uh, sit on this committee, and it's, so that's a great opportunity to bring anything to, to other councillors that, that there may be a query in an area. And, um, but, and I also look thank them for their input, because this is a really critical area of council. I think most people want to make sure that not only our risk management uh, is looked after properly, which is a, a big part of the report, but also the finances are, are really uh, are really tight and that there's nothing untoward happening or we don't get any surprises. Thank you, Councillor Lawless. Councillor Brooks, you wish to speak to that motion? I saw you right in a way, so we won't do that. <laughs> Councillor Martin, you wish to sum up? <laughs> Yes, just to finish off with our um, internal audit action status report, we have no high risk ratings. Uh, we have um, five in medium and we have five in low, so we're sitting pretty good. Thank, thank you, you. Councilman. All those in favour of the motion? Carried, thank you. Getting pretty close to the end. 10.3 community Neil infrastructure, 10.4 infrastructure Neil. Actions officers list 11.1. Can I have the councillor move that motion, please, Councillor Burke? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I move that uh, council receive and note the action officers list. Thank you. Can I have a councillor second that motion, Councillor Cox? Thank you, Councillor Burke. You wish to speak to it? Self explanatory. Thank you, thank, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Council, same thing. Any other councillor wish to speak to it? All those in favour? Carried, thank you. 12, notice of motions, Neil. 13, petitions and joint letters, Neil. Cancel seal, Neil. Urgent and general business. Cancel the state urgent business, uh, please, if any. None? Okay, we're going to stand in orders. Um, now, now, this concludes the open, sec uh, the open section of the council meeting. We will now take a short break. I can have a councillor move, councillor Mansfield and councillor Cox second. All those in favour? Carried, thank you. And we're going to a resume meeting. Can I have a councillor going straight? We're going to have a break. We're going to go straight. We're running a bit late. What do you want to do? One item, Mr. Mayor. We do it?